Hi guys, I have prepared a free Excel spreadsheet for you that you can use it to place simulated market orders on over 8,000 US stocks and ETFs handled by the EX exchange, the investors exchange. So the spreadsheet looks like that and you basically start by pressing on the start live button. I do that now. And this is going to give me live codes that received from the EX Fitch provider on a one second time interval. These codes comprise bids, asks and last sale prices. You can see here on the live EX price monitor on the bottom. The left column contains the tickers on which I have asked to monitor the prices. And these include the Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple, Twitter, and Facebook stocks. And the columns on the right contain, as you see, the size of the best bid uh, code, the price of that best bid code, followed by the respective ask information, and the last sale price and the last sale size, plus the respective timestamps. Now, uh, you can change the tickers that you monitor easily if you go to the configure sheet right here. As you see here, the monitor tickers are the ones you saw earlier. But you can manually edit those tickets here, delete some of them, add new ones, or modify these tickets here. Now, you can also change the fields that are visible on the simulator screen. Uh, if you go back here, you see these fields are bit size, bit price, and so on, up to last updated. And uh, in the coffee goods screen, you can uncheck any of these tick boxes here if you do not want those uh, columns to be displayed. Now, the tag is set to one second, but you can change that anywhere up to 60 minutes, basically one hour interval. And the transaction fee by default is set to $8. This is the brokerage fee that applies on each transaction. You can change that here as well. In that, you have to press the apply button. Now, let me go back to the simulator seed and let me, for demonstration purposes, place a buy uh, market order on the Microsoft stock. So, let me go to that cell here containing my ticker, which is currently at Google, and click that little drop down and change that into Microsoft. Now, as soon as I change that to Microsoft, you saw immediately the order book chart here has changed. This order book displays right now the two best ask prices and the two best bid prices because I have set it to do so. But I can click on that button to show all codes, not only the best two. If I do that now, you can see here there are four ask codes, these little uh, brown squares you see on the top, and also there are four bid codes that are displayed. Uh, the numerical information, the exact information you can see on the tables on the right. So you have here the ask codes of Microsoft on that table, and below that you have the bid codes of Microsoft, which basically contain information on the exact price and size of its respective code. Now, let me go back to solely the best two codes. I think that's better for viewing purposes, so because you can more easily see the spread on what it really matters, so the best ask and the best bid. And uh, let me try to buy, let's say, here I can enter the number of sales that I would like to buy. Uh, it's 300, I can change that to 200, for example. Okay. And if I'm going to click now the buy button, I do that now, what happens is I bought, as you see, if I scroll 
a bit on the right under these aggregated transactions per ticker that I have bought 200 shares of Microsoft at a total cost of $70,370. Now, this total cost is actually comprised by two separate pieces. I can see those pieces if I go to my ledger sheet here. And you can see here that at that time, on the left, I placed actually one transaction which has been split for accounting purposes into two. Each one consisted of a size of 100. So basically, rather than buying 200 shares at a single price, I bought 100 shares at that price, 85.92, and then the remaining 100 shares at the price of 87.62. This here is the respective cost for each one of these two transactions. And if I go back to my simulator sheet, you can see here the total cost is the other realized profit, which is a negative because I had to pay money. So negative profit means positive cost equal to 17,370. Now, because right now the life price of Microsoft is 85.51, I do have a current so-called book value of 70,101. So if I add these two numbers together, I'm left up with a so-called book profit or a total profit of minus $269, which is the sum of my realized and unrealized PNR. So I scroll back to the left. Let's say I try to buy another stock, for example, uh, Google, and uh, I change that into 300 shares. Now, because on, uh, as you see here, the ask quotes on Google are only two of them, each of them at 100 shares. Now, for a small interval of time, at the the third quote as well, but right now it's again a total of 200 shares. So if I try to buy 300, my order is not going to be fulfilled. Now, it will because uh, I have a third ask quote available. So let me change that to 400 to see what is going to happen. So if I want to buy 400 shares, I'm going to have only a partial fill. So let's do that now. I hit on the buy button. And if I scroll on the right, you see, even though I placed an order to buy 400 shares of Google, uh, my position is contains only 300 shares, so I bought only 300. This is natural because no uh, counterparty were available on the EX exchange that offered to sell that many shares. So the maximum I could buy was 300, and this is what happened. And my total cost is $331,363. You can see here on the chart above my real-time valuation of my total profit, the book profit, so the sum of unrealized and realized profit on Microsoft, on Google, and the total, which is the sum of my two positions here. Okay, now let me close all my positions. So I'm going to sell my 200 shares you see here below the right of Microsoft and 300 shares of Google. Okay, I can start with uh, Google. I change that into 300 shares because this is what I have and short sales are not allowed in this system here. So if I click on the sell button, I did. Let me scroll on the right and you can see my total position on Google now is zero. And it's not a surprise that my book profit, minus 14,300, is exactly the same as my realized profit. And this is natural because since I sold everything that I bought, I have no unrealized part. So my total PNL 
consists only of the realized PNL. So these two numbers are equal as they should. And uh, let me do the same for Microsoft. So I do not have any open position. I change that to 200 shares and I click sell. And I look now that my aggregate positions on both stocks is zero. And what I have managed with this little trading adventure, thanks God simulated, is to lose uh, a net amount of $14,806, which you can see on the chart above. Okay, that completes this uh, little uh, demonstration of this uh, trading simulator spreadsheet. I hope uh, you have fun and uh, you can uh, have a better luck than I do and uh, make some money, even simulated money, if that is. Okay, thank you for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.